The war against Max eating out of the trash had come to an end. Or so we thought. The deployment of the tip-out garbage can, linked above, had given us overconfidence that we had won. But Max pulled an unexpected move and decided to eat all the regular food out of the pantry. So today we're going to build a Dutch door baby gate thing combo. The design for this gate is pretty simple, which coincidentally was my mom's nickname for me growing up. I began over at the chop saw where I set up a stop block so that I can ensure all of my cuts come out at equal length. If things don't come out square, my door is going to end up crooked, and my house came with plenty of those pre-installed. So I cut them all out and threw them over on the bench. The frame itself is just held together with a couple pocket screws and a little wood glue. This is just a gate. There's no need to get crazy with dovetails or fancy joinery here. Like I mentioned earlier, the most important part of this build is making sure everything is flat and square. So take the time to make sure everything is clamped together and clamped to a flat surface to make sure it doesn't move on you. If the two frames are warped or don't line up, you're going to have a bad day. Once the frames are together, we're going to create a rabbit around the inside perimeter that will hold the panel. So I installed a quarter inch rabbiting bit and put a rabbit around the inside of both frames. The rabbiting bit's going to leave you with round corners, and that's the opposite of what I want. So I busted out my chisels and trimmed up the corners and then deleted all the footage of the other ones that didn't look so pretty. I decided to make the floating panel out of solid lumber. You could do a plywood center, but you do need to worry about getting wood that's finished on both sides. I didn't feel like dealing with warped crappy plywood, so I went the solid wood route. After it came out of the clamps, I used an old chisel to clean up all the glue squeeze out, and then gave it a once over with the sander, and then finally trimmed it to size with the track saw. I cut the panel about a sixteenth of an inch short on each side to give it room to move inside the frame. I made a quick phone call to the CEO of Tidepod and told him to go ahead and buy that fifth car. I'm about to dump three or four hundred gallons of glue on the outside of this frame. Once the glue was spread out, I threw the other frame on top and then sandwiched it together with every clamp that I own. It just does not matter how many times I buy clamps. It is absolutely not enough. While that was set aside to dry, it was time to cut out the little pieces that are going to make the X on the front of this. I don't know if it's technically called rustic, but that seems to be the title that gets stamped on anything with an X on it. Using the method I mentioned in my picnic table video, I figured out all the angles for the pieces of the X. They are held in place with wood glue and a few pin nails to make sure that they stay where they should be. You may want to check what size pins you have in your nailer before you use it. Otherwise, you are pinching off and sanding down pieces of metal. That would never happen to me, but I, you know, I know a guy. I took it outside to spray a few coats of white paint on it, and then it was back inside to trim up a few pieces of leftover hickory I had from that tip-out garbage can. Since these two things are pretty much right next to each other, I figured they should probably match. So with that in mind, this piece of hickory got a chamfer and a few coats of Danish oil. One of the few things I managed to not screw up this time was to make sure to tape off the top of the door and the section of the hickory where wood glue is going to go. I know, I shocked myself with that one too. The T-hinges were installed on the top and bottom of the doors, and then it was time to go upstairs to install it. Because everything in my house appears to have been built with a touch of insanity, I needed to add a little strip here in order to get the hinges to sit flush. But once those were in, all I had left to do was install the latch, and Max's days of eating my food are over with. At least out of the pantry. Come on. Of course I give him scraps. If you're new here, I'll let you know that no, this door and the garbage can do not match the 1950s style grandma wallpaper that I have on the walls. The remodel will happen someday. The gate was easy to build, but it's rock solid and will do its job to keep Max out of the food. Max was not exactly excited to see the brand new gate that I built, but I think he'll forgive me. If you have a furry friend in the house that likes to go where he shouldn't, or maybe even small children that keep getting out of their cages and running amok in the house, then you definitely need one of these baby Kate Dutch door majiggers. 
you can build one for yourself by hopping over to my website and grabbing the plans. If you enjoyed the video today, I would appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, maybe even leave a comment. If you're feeling really frisky, you can even hit that bell, so that way you're notified every time I show up to make a fool of myself on video. I'll see you next time.